Well, as promised yesterday during the five headlines, I want to spend a little bit of time elaborating on a point that uh, came up during that segment. And for that, I want you to imagine a scenario that in light of recent events, you'd think would generate some attention among the national news media. So picture a black student walking to the front of a study lounge at a major university and loudly announcing that there are too many Jews in the room. The study lounge isn't a place for the Jews, the student explains. They should leave immediately. And then there's a round of applause from other non-Jews in the room as the Jewish students make their exit. Now, if something like that happened, how many congressional hearings do you think would be held? How many impassioned monologues would we see on CNN declaring that bigotry on college campuses has simply gone too far? How many university administrators would be forced to resign? Probably a few. And honestly, we don't know the answers to those questions for sure, because as of now, despite the widely reported outbreak of anti-Semitism on college campuses, this particular scenario hasn't unfolded as of yet. But if you replace Jews with white people, then we do have the answer to those questions clear as day. That's because a few years ago at the University of Virginia, a black student did exactly what I just described. She stood up and she stood up and told white people to get out of the student center. And she said because of their skin color that these white students were not allowed there. And indeed, some white people got up and left, and it was all recorded on a cell phone. Let's watch that again. Public service announcement. Excuse me. If y'all didn't know, this is the MSC, and frankly, there's just too many white people in here, and this is a space for people of color. So just be really cognizant of the space that you're taking up, because it does make some of us POCs uncomfortable when we see too many white people in here. It's only been open for four days, and frankly, there's the whole university for a lot of y'all to be at, and there's very few spaces for us. So keep that in mind. Thank you. So somebody films that uh, racist, anti-white rant. Nobody says anything. No one laughs at this racist or condemns her in any way. It's just silently filmed because everyone's too afraid to challenge this. And the only reaction is applause as the white people make their exit. Now, after this incident, it goes without saying, there were no congressional hearings. No administrators at UVA were forced to resign. Nobody was even calling for that. There were no primetime CNN monologues about what's wrong with American universities. As upsetting as it may be, we shouldn't be surprised by that non-response because uh, systemic anti-white racism on college campuses is open and blatant. The specifics are rarely discussed, but they're not hard to find. And it's been going on for decades. You know, I, I vividly remember all the way back um, in 2007 when it was revealed that the University of Delaware was running a mandatory re-education program that forced thousands of students living on campus to affirm that all whites are racist and that non-whites can't be racist, among other things. And uh, RAs in the dorms were put in charge of monitoring students and reporting any of them who harbored unapproved opinions on race or sexuality or related topics. The university system, the university, uh, University of Delaware rather, they referred to these struggle sessions as treatment for white people. And when the free speech group FIRE brought all this to light, the university hastily shut the program down. But nothing changed in the university system because nobody forced any kind of change. Those kinds of things continue to happen. They've been happening ever since. Even on University of Delaware, they were just repackaged. There was no moral panic about the scourge of anti-white racism on college campuses. Instead, in the years since that episode and for a while before it, the university system continued to impose a radical anti-white, anti-Christian, anti-truth doctrine on millions of students nationwide. Literally millions of college students have been taught, and many have come to believe, that white people are inherently bigoted and evil, along with all manner of other insidious left-wing myths, like that whole thing about how men can give birth and women can have penises. And that's why the, the current burst of outrage over anti-Semitism on college campuses, it's more than a little bit conspicuous. People in corporate media and even some prominent figures in the Democrat Party are finally speaking out against discrimination in the university system. But the years and years and years and years and years and years of rampant anti-whiteism, including the mandatory brainwashing sessions where whites were told to hate themselves for their skin color, never garnered an ounce of outrage from these people, right? From the corporate media, the Democrat, from the mainstream. There are plenty of conservatives who spoke out against it. Well, I've got a Christmas gift idea that's sure to make you the hero of the season. Now, we all know the holidays can be a bit hectic, the shopping, the cooking, the never-ending list of things to do. 
But fear not, because I've discovered a gift that's not just thoughtful, it's downright transformative. The gift of GenuCell skincare. From now until Christmas, GenuCell's most popular package has a special discount just for my listeners at GenuCell.com slash Walsh. Treat yourself and your loved ones to the absolute best skincare in the world. Those troubling forehead wrinkles, fine lines, skin redness, and yes, even a sagging jawline will disappear right before your eyes with GenuCell's most popular collection. GenuCell promises immediate effects. You'll see results in less than 12 hours, guaranteed, or your money back. Plus, included in every most popular package is your free Hyaluronic Aced Serum for skin hydration to restore your youthful appearance. GenuCell sent down a ton of products for the entire office, and I can't even put into words how much better their faces look because of GenuCell. Everybody disgusts me just a little bit less now. It's like Christmas came early. You deserve to look and feel your best this holiday season. Go to GenuCell.com slash Walsh to get this incredible holiday discount. Every order today is instantly upgraded to free express shipping. That's GenuCell.com slash Walsh today. Grand Canyon University is an affordable, private Christian university based in Phoenix, Arizona. They are dedicated to making education fit into your already busy schedule, which is why they offer 270 of their academic programs online. From scholarship to academic support, GCU's graduation team provides you with personal support you need to obtain your goals. GCU's online programs offer you the freedom to earn your degree on your own time from wherever you are. GCU is praised for its culture of community giving and impact. They integrate the free market system and a welcoming Christian worldview into their academic programs. Achieve your goals with a personalized plan and a supportive team behind you. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University, private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. That's gcu.edu. The university system as a whole has been up until now mostly exempt from criticism by the corporate media and its ideological allies. Now, that has changed in the last, like, five minutes. Yesterday, we played a clip of the uh, Fareed Zaharia, Zachariah, whatever it was, monologue on CNN, uh, blasting the uh, university system for its political and ideological bias. And many conservatives have celebrated that monologue, as we talked about. And, you know, they celebrated other similar glimmers of sanity from the corporate media on this issue. But there's not much to celebrate here. The criticisms of the universities are, are the safest possible criticisms to make. They still aren't touching the third rail. Now, all of this is not to say that that anti-Semitism isn't a problem. It is. No serious person can deny that. But the very selective nature of this accountability tells you that the people calling out the system today aren't willing to go down and inspect the roots of the problem. It also shows that only certain groups are allowed to be viewed as victims. It kind of reminds me of when um, Nick Cannon went on that rant claiming that white people are bloodthirsty savages and that blacks are the real Hebrews. Now, he was forced to apologize for the Hebrews bit because it was anti-Semitic, which arguably it wasn't even anti-Semitic. It was just crazy, which sometimes those two things go together, not always. But either way, the the much more aggressively bigoted and racist stuff about how white people aren't even human, how they're subhuman savages, that was glossed over. There was no apology for it. This is why I'm kind of glad to see, you know, the, as we talked about yesterday, Harvard circling the wagons around Claudine Gay, because maybe it will show people that the rot in academia runs deep. This week, as part of his effort to oust uh, Claudine Gay from office, the Harvard alumnus Bill Ackman highlighted some of this rot. He published messages that he received from anonymous Harvard faculty members. And one faculty member told Ackman, quote, whiteness at Harvard is deemed fundamentally oppressive. Indigenous people are represented as in need of justice and reparations. Jews are presented as white people. It's therefore okay to hate Israel and Jews as they are deemed to be oppressors. You know, that kind of reminds me of someone who made this connection when everything first happened with the war in Israel about, you know, the reason why the left is circling around Hamas is because they're the less white group. I think there was someone who made that point. I think it was actually me. More on that in a second. Another faculty member explained, quote, Israel is the rare case where we have a a hot conflict between people that are deemed white versus people of color. A third professor put it this way, quote, it's about whiteness versus people of color. Now, putting all this together, Ackman concluded that uh, in his letter to Claude Inglay, that, that, quote, the problems uh, at Harvard are clearly not just about Jews in Israel. It's abundantly clear that straight white males are discriminated against in recruitment and advancement at Harvard. Now, that's a realization that's been a very long time coming. And yet, even now, The only members of Harvard's faculty who are willing to talk about it are also insisting on anonymity because they're afraid. 
even though these professors work in an academic institution that's supposed to value free thought and dialogue, and many, and even though many of these faculty members have tenure, they're too scared to say anything on the record. At one of the world's best universities, supposedly, faculty members have less freedom of speech than a random person on Twitter. And by the way, this is not a whataboutism argument. Okay, if anything, this is a what is it argument, or maybe a where does it come from argument. Yes, we should be highly critical of anti-Semitic language on college campuses, but where does it come from? What is it rooted in? The problem is that the current backlash against the university system is only surface level. We're, we're not digging deeper to see what the problem is rooted in. That's also why so many people seem to be surprised that college campuses around the country have rallied around Hamas. It's not surprising if you understand what's actually going on. For most of these college ki kids, as, as I have argued from the beginning, they see the conflict overseas as a conflict between the colonized and the colonizer, as those university uh, officials themselves were, were saying. The colonizer is always the whiter group in any dispute. The colonized are the less white. It's a simple formula. And this ideology of decolonization, it is indeed genocidal. They truly believe that the colonizers, wherever they are and whoever they are, deserve to be killed. That's what they believe. That's the context for this anti-Semitism issue on campus. It's where it comes from. It bubbles up from the depths of the very rotten core of the American university system. It's so rotten that it cannot be salvaged. It cannot be reformed by getting rid of a few administrative officials. And it especially cannot be solved or even really addressed if we're treating the pro-Hamas stuff as if it's isolated and new and happening in a vacuum. It's a bigger and much deeper problem. And until we face that fact, as long as we're celebrating scraps that CNN tosses our way, then nothing will get better. The Claudine gays of the world will keep their jobs, and white and Asian men, alone among all other groups, will have to fight for theirs. That is until we can all agree that the entire system, which is rotten to its core, is canceled. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.